Welcome back to the Mastering Runeterra podcast with Jay and Bay, the number one source for competitive legends of Runeterra news and information. If you're looking for the best decks to play right now, right now. be sure to check us out on Twitter at Master Runeterra or in our Discord. And if you want to take the next step in leveling up your game, check out our Runeterra team on Patreon where we do weekly learning calls and one-on-one coaching. Now strap in and grab yourself some Boro snacks because we are about to start Mastering Runeterra. Welcome back to the Master Gutierrez podcast with Jay Bay and a special guest Steve Rubin on the loan from Riot Games here to talk to us about uh, maybe not everything competitive, but a lot of things competitive. Um, before we jump into that, though, we have to thank all of our subscribers and um, all of our patrons. Thank you guys so much uh, for your support. Let's just do awesome stuff like this, like bring you uh, podcasts uh, with members of Riot. Um, Steve, welcome back to the podcast. <laughs> Hello, thanks for having me back. It's been a while. Yeah, right. I, I do you guys remember how long it's been? It's been about a year, I want to say. I think it's been pretty close to a year. Yeah, so yeah, my hair was longer. <laughs> That's right. That's all I remember. That's how I tell time during during uh COVID was how long my hair was, and now that it's gone, I'm like, oh, I don't know when that happened. You just look at pictures like that was May, I'm pretty sure, lengthwise. That was mm-hmm. <laughs> this long ago yeah, yeah. <laughs> um for anyone who maybe doesn't uh know who you are do you want to give uh, a quick um intro- introduction to yourself i could do it but i don't want to do it uh not justice and also i'm curious because i know your role has changed in this last mm-hmm. year and i'm curious you know yeah where it's at and stuff now yeah so i am a game designer on legends of Runeterra. i guess i I'm, i forgot my name maybe it's early i'm steve rubin uh and a lot of people know me as rubin zoo Um, And I'm a game designer on Legends of Runeterra. So game designers on Legends of Runeterra primarily are working on on cards. So I do work on um, expansions as well as balance patches. So anything anything from fixing bugs on your cards to uh, designing new champions and creating new archetypes and mechanics and uh, coding them all into the game. Uh, That's kind of what game designers do on Legends of Runeterra, the card designers. I do work on that, but I also am now sort of the lead on tournaments. Um, so in addition to the normal card stuff, I am sort of responsible for outlining a new system for for competitive play. Um, and that's been something that I sort of started working on in the second half of last year. Uh, it used to be Riot Cotton Candy, um, and you know he did a great job with all the seasonal tournaments and making worlds happen from, from nothing. Um, so definitely props to him and yeah, I'm kind of moving over and I'd love today to talk a little bit about some of the transitions we're doing this year. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been a long time coming and I think that some of this stuff is, it's really exciting for me because a lot of the stuff we work way ahead of time and seeing players leave all this feedback and it's like, Oh, you know, how are we going to address it? So yeah, that's what I've been working on now. And hopefully I can share some with that, uh, with that today. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I mean, we've been trying to have a co- a competitive conversation for a really long time. It's kind of our mm-hmm. bread and butter. Um, now, would you say you have competitive card game experience? <laughs> do you think? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I've been rank one on the ladder a few times in lore, but but yeah, no. I think uh, I, I used to be a professional uh, Magic the Gathering player. Uh, traveled the world. I hit uh, platinum, uh, which is the sort of the highest um, pro level in Magic for three years in a row, and I, and I went to the World Championships twice. Um, so it was definitely that time was, was super exciting for me. And, and as a, as a player and now a dev, I, I, I love to sort of take that, um, uh, you know, take what I learned there and kind of put a lens through like, oh, like how, what, what kind of competitive system would I be interested in? Um, since that was sort of how I ended up in the, in this role in the card game industry, it, you know, is, is from my roots in magic. So it's always good to sort of, you know, use that past experience but at the same time there's a lot of unique uh things to lore that we need that we need to consider and that's been uh really really one of the most difficult things is is you know what what is necessarily the best for the upper echelon type players that that i call them and and the system that we're actually moving towards is sort of both trying to attack uh two problems one is like how do we better serve our upper echelon players like players like like jason player players like majin uh, you know, players like Alan, people who are really into the competitive system. But at the same time, how do we actually get more players? And I'm 
Colin is kind of like going wide. We're like, oh, how do we get more players involved in tournaments? And those two things are often sort of like at odds with each other, but hopefully we can attack those this year. Yeah. And um, just to clarify for people, because I know sometimes um, there's some confusion around what we're talking about when we're talking about tournaments or mm -hmm. organized play. Can you kind of list it from like maybe sort of like the bottom to the top of the things? Because you're, you're not just in tournaments, right? You're also doing like gauntlets, for instance. Uh, correct me right. Wrong. So, yeah. Can you like give the so we're talking about tournaments it's not just like seasonals right it's the whole like ecosystem of uh sort of competitive also is another word that gets thrown around that we use but it's a little right. confusing at times so you want me to break that down a little bit for for our listeners yeah so so i think uh where it starts is at, at the base level where like anybody can go, go into the game and and play the ranked ladder um that is sort of like the baseline for pvp in legends of runeterra um, but that definitely doesn't always necessarily lead to sort of, um, <laughs> sorry, I, I kind of caught myself there, but the, the latter is sort of like the baseline play, but then organized play or competitive, some people call it, is really that, that next step of like, Hey, what if I want to take, take Lendas of Runeterra or any game for that matter, a bit more seriously than just like playing on the ladder. And for that, that means usually uh, for card games is tournaments. Like, how do I test my skills? How do I, you know, how do I prove myself as a player? How do I go in there and, and earn rewards? Like, like what makes, what, what's the difference between a, a game that I just kind of play for fun on the ladder and one that I play uh, competitively? Like, what are my sort of like big long-term motives for playing the game? And, and that's sort of what I work on with tournaments. And you're totally right, Jason, that it's not really just tournaments it's almost like at riot we would call it like metagame systems like what are the things that motivate players to play other than just the game itself because a lot of the times and for lore for many years that's kind of what carried us was the core gameplay um but now you know baseline talking about gauntlets and tournaments we want to find out ways to you know both give players uh let players experience variety like i think a lot of players have been playing like the standard war rank rank ladder uh, for a long time, uh, and the other one is almost like a competitive feel. Like right now, we have the we have the seasonal tournaments, but those only happen you know every two or three months, right? Um, and I think having more bite sized ways to have that competitive feeling and to have the sort of like oh I'm 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 playing for something more than just my, my the number of my ladder rank is going to be really important to get players keep playing. So I think organized play and this is like a really complicated um answer to to, to jason's question is, is really just um anything that gets players like playing the game which 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 sounds silly because it's like oh it's a game like you play for fun but i think um, all of us know like strategy games are really about that that idea at least for me i'm kind of personally um I don't say that I was, I never said that I was like addicted to magic, but I was addicted to getting better at magic. Like the idea that I am like progressing just by becoming smarter was always something that was super exciting. But if you don't have ways to test your skill against other players, really, you don't get that feeling of like, oh yeah, I'm getting better. So, so that's kind of where we're at. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and this is probably a good segue. Um, but yeah, for, for me, it's, you know, you really kind of hit the, the nail on the head here because, um, you know, since Worlds, I haven't really played a lot of Runeterra. I love the game. I absolutely love it. I'd be happy to play it all day, every day, if I, you know, was so incentivized to kind of thing. And yeah, it's just, um, you know, there. I like to play because I like to, like you say, challenge myself. And so I want to play against the other best players, and I want them to be on their best game, and then I want to beat them on that day. And like, you know, feel like I accomplished that thing. I put the work in, and, uh, you know, I was the best on that day. Um, and that's why I love uh, playing and yeah when we don't have that system you know for uh players like myself at least to like come together and actually make it matter and know that someone's trying on the other end and make it feel like you earned it um yeah the ladder's not quite cutting it so um so this is probably a good uh like i was saying a good segue though for why don't you tell us you know what sort of you've been working on or what you've been digging into and you know you mentioned about how um things are very different for legends of Runeterra compared to other games because it is so unique you know there's no there's no paper uh game tied to it um the game is extremely accessible 
there's not like a very big, uh, you know, paywall or anything. You don't have to buy boosters. Um, and so I got to imagine those things probably factor in quite a bit when you're trying to figure out how to make um, a system work, you know, with the prizes and everything. Um, so, yeah, what are you what are you taking away for a little bit? Tell us, um, you know, a little bit about, uh, you know, what you're here to sort of lay on us with um, what we can be expecting. Yeah, so in, in 2023, uh, it's going to be definitely a year of like experimentation and transition in terms of uh, what we can do competitively. Um, starting off, we do still have the World Ender Seasonal, um, and I'm happy to announce that part of this year is actually going to be simplifying the paths to Worlds. So instead of having seasonal points and ranked points and top fours, we're just going to have points and we're just going to have direct invites. Um, and in the World Ender Seasonal, uh, the the winners from each shard will qualify directly into the world final. Um, so 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 yeah, uh, it's gonna be kind of really spicy, uh, spicy tournament because that's a lot on the line right away. Um, beyond that, in terms of what we're doing th the rest of this year, is kind of setting up that system so that it it can you know have our paths to worlds. Um, so. Basically, what we're going to start to do is we're just going to transition into a new uh, tournament system. And the main things that we're doing to change are going to be, uh, you know, things that we heard from players, like wanting to just be able to have more opportunities to play uh, competitive. So starting off, we're going to be introducing uh, what we're calling the Daily Rumble, which is essentially a gauntlet that happens each day. Um, and the formats for those gauntlets will rotate each week. Um, and what'll be nice about that is we'll have new formats every week. There'll be like a tournament to play in each day. You'll, you'll get the opportunity to play once per day. Um, and you'll be able to earn, earn points on a new reward track. Uh, and I, I think we're pretty excited about that. I don't want to get too deep into the details there, but essentially it's going to be entirely free to play reward track. So the more that you win in gauntlets, you're going to earn trophies and those trophies will get you things on the reward track. Very similar to an event pass. Um, but with say, some, almost its own battle pass. Yeah, it's kind of its own battle pass, but with more like prestigious rewards. So, so that's pretty exciting. And the daily gauntlets, or sorry, the the daily rumble is sort of really going to fuel that. So players are going to really want to go on that track. Um, mainly, uh, one of the things that we're doing as well is there will be um, there will be now a new monthly tournament called the the Runeterra Open. Um, the Runeterra Open is essentially um, think of think of what a seasonal is now, but almost like a seasonal light where we will have them happening every month. Um, and importantly, these will be more gauntlet style where they'll have a sort of like win win eight before you lose three uh, sort sort of sort of deal. Um, and the one big reason that we're doing this is we just want there to always feel like there's something to do. There's always a challenge ahead of you. Um, and these monthly Runeterra opens are going to coincide with new card set releases. So like something we learned with Worlds last year is like the excitement of having a new card set and then having tournaments right away. We're not going to go as far to say that this is the these Runeterra opens are going to happen the week that, that the sets launch. Um, but we're sort of going to oscillate them uh, whenever there's content or a balance patch. The Runeterra opens are going to happen uh, you know, two weeks after, basically. So there's always going to be something, there's always going to be a new meta every month, which was something really, really excited about. And the thing about Runeterra Opens that's that gets me excited is the eventual uh, path to Worlds, where not quite when we originally have the beta season, but later this year, the Runeterra Opens are going to be the way that you get uh, Runeterra points, which is, uh, sorry, there's a lot of stuff going on here. So if there's any questions, definitely ask, ask, ask away. Um, the Runeterra points are similar to like what seasonal points were last year. We're like, oh, over the course of time, if I play in these Runeterra opens, I'll be able to get points to qualify me for worlds. Um, so hopefully overall, I know that's a lot, a lot to throw on y'all, but overall the system is going to be pretty simplified with direct invites, uh, coming from select Runeterra opens that we're going to call world qualifiers, as well as sort of the overall, uh, sort of point system from participating over the course of the year. Yeah. Just so. I mean, this is, I was gonna say just for, uh, uh, it's pretty, pretty great sounding to start with. Um, mm -hmm. my big thing for Runeterra over the last year, the big, the big thing that I've been pushing is that gauntlet has been, is, is a wasted opportunity. That gauntlet is like one of the biggest things I think Runeterra could be doing to bring people into the competitive crowd. And it just kind of like, didn't get there. 
And so having something like you call it the daily rumble, uh, yeah. having something like that is really, really exciting. And then the second biggest sticking point for me <laughs> with competitive is that once you finish, like you, you practice super hard for seasonals, you grind ladder, 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 you play seasonals, and then you're done. And none of that prep you had matters anymore. And it felt so bad because there was nothing else for two to three months. But now hearing that there's like always something that you can look forward to, maybe this month's tournament didn't mm -hmm. go so well. Now you have the next open to look towards. Maybe you put three weeks into testing into that format. And like that's that's really exciting to hear as a competitive player because the worst possible thing I think is dead times. It's so brutal to have like a several month downtime. When there's nothing you can do, nothing to prepare for. You're just like, yeah. For anyone <laughs> listening at home, he's looking around his room for nothing. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was like that. I was, yes, here. I was going to. I was going to say real quick. Um, so there, there is going to be more information coming um, from Riot. There is mm -hmm. going to be, you know, a whole uh, press release giving all the details for everything that uh, Steve is talking about today. Uh, we are mostly just uh, skimming over some things, getting a little bit of information here. Uh, not diving too much into some exact details. Uh, but yeah, all of that sounds amazing. I was curious, do the daily gauntlets, do those get you the points that help you qualify for Worlds also? Like, is are they part of that competitive um, part? No. So so th there, is a, there is a separation. Um, so essentially, both of them will give you points on the season reward track. And we are going to be implementing a system kind of... I don't want to say similar. It's it's almost just using the same verbiage uh, where you'll be able to earn uh, buys, aka prime glories, by playing in the um, by, by advancing on the reward track. So it will be, you know, it will be for super competitive players, you know, getting those prime glories will really help you do better in the Runeterra Opens because those will give you buys in the Runeterra Opens. Um, the system is depth is tuned. Uh, in such a way where the Runeterra opens are really where you get the most points in the reward track. Uh, Cause as, as a competitive player myself who have been in these systems before, like systems that have a forced grind uh, aren't, don't feel as good as systems that really reward like, Oh, if I just go to the monthlies and I do really well at those, those give you a ton of points in the reward track. So not only do you, you know, as a super competitive player, maybe you get to skip some of the grind, but you really get to pay, Pay, it really, they really pay off your skill, right? Where the daily gauntlets almost more, uh, I would say they test participation where, hey, you can, for getting, you know, no wins, you'll still get points on the reward track, which is pretty awesome. Like you'll be able to go get, get your rewards that we have. Like we have player titles and other prestigious things that we're going to have um, and that I won't talk too much about today uh, because we don't need to get into it. But the big thing is being able to get those buys will be pretty, pretty important because it's sort of like when it, not necessarily when it rains, it pours, but it's sort of when you do well in one Runeterra open, that'll give you definitely like a prime glory for the next one. And if you do well in the next one, you know, that'll give you prime two prime glories for the last one. You know, since they're happening every month, there's going to be a kind of a constant need for advancing your reward track. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Did, did y'all have thoughts on that? I love it. I think it's uh, absolutely fantastic. Only positive. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, I'm like, I'm working a lot of Saturdays now, and so it makes it you know borderline impossible for me to to play uh seasonals in the traditional sense and this is one of the things i love so much about this sort of system where you have to get x wins before you get x losses and that you can i assume you can start sort of like are you gonna have maybe like other start times or is it like you can start whenever you want yeah we're, we're moving to a system where there's always going to be like a window where you can play for instance the the daily rumble will have like an eight hour window uh, from you know like 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. Where, where there'll be like healthy cues and you can get it, get it done. But the monthlies, the important ones, will be an all weekend long. Hey, finish your run during the weekend. Um, though eventually we're looking to essentially use the monthly, the monthly, the Runeterra opens to replace what you know now as a seasonal tournament. So eventually um, later this year we'll have the ability to have uh, a day one, you know. Uh, sort of like not Swiss, but the sort of Q type tournament into a cut, into a day two, very similar to the seasonal day twos now where you'll have a ladder or so you'll have a bracket of 32 players. Since I think that one of the uh, things I've seen in, in the space now in terms of these sort of like open style tournaments is, you know, I think we really like the idea of crowning a winner. We really like the idea of having that intense gameplay, that playoff at the end. 
And I think that's one of the ways that Runeterra opens will be really, really exciting because, I mean, I'm really hopeful for them to just be community events because one thing that we actually, I, I didn't cover yet is that Runeterra opens are not going to be like seasonals where you need to top 700 the ladder. Uh, anybody will be open to play in them. Um, so we're really excited for especially testing out new formats in them. Like maybe there'll be an Eternal monthly and then the community gets really, really excited. Okay, let's all get together, figure out what the best Eternal decks are, both competitive players and players who are just like, well, I might as well play in the Runeterra Open because I'm going to get a crap ton of uh, trophies for it. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but that, that's one thing that we're doing to sort of hopefully make it so that just tournaments are more appealing for everybody. Like if you, it's almost going to be like you're missing out if you don't if you don't play in your in the monthlies. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I love the the accessibility of uh, you know letting players play. I think also just um, you know exposing another way to expose players to you know kind of higher level play. Um, you know the fact that you could just join the game and just jump right in. I think that's great. Um, I was able to do that with the very first seasonals mm -hmm. was around like the time when I started playing. And I think I've been playing for like two weeks and I just, I didn't even know what I was doing. I didn't you know, know what most of the cards did, but it was, it was fantastic. You know, like I got hooked from that. And so um, allowing more players into that, into that sort of scene, into that circle, I think is, is great. Um, so, okay. So to, to start off, you're saying there's uh there's gonna be a bit of a beta. Is that why, is that why it's not going to be a two day yeah. event starting off? So, so yeah, let's, let's go ahead and talk about that. Um, so what we what we're doing is we are launching the beta season directly after um, the World Ender Seasonal Tournament. So the World Ender Seasonal Tournament got kind of we we moved it up because we think the the best choice here is to sort of get the you know did the hot fix have sort of a, a patch for the six E uh, World Ender Tournament. Um, that of course again just to reiterate the it's going to have direct qualifications to the World Final, not 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 Worlds. Uh, not, not world qualifiers, but the world final, which, you know, maybe we can talk about that on another podcast, what that might look like. Um, so definitely get ready for that. And then we're going to transition into a beta season. So starting in February, there's going to be daily rumbles and um, Runeterra opens. Um, and what that'll do is there'll be a completely new reward track. Definitely check that out. Uh, really important here is like getting your y'all feedback. Like it's a beta. We've, we're going to figure out what formats players like. We want to figure out hey, are, are the timing windows right? Like, is this too many games? How does the reward track feel? Because for when, when we initially release it, we won't quite, we don't think it's quite ready to start uh, have, having the fidelity where we can start having Runeterra opens, give you points to Worlds. But we want to just have that beta season so that we can learn, okay, this is how many players are playing in the tournaments. This is how many points they're getting, stuff like that. So we can eventually launch later this year uh, the sort of more, you know, serious system where we're going to actually start play. Not I hate to say like playing for keeps, but you know, once, once you start getting those world qualifications from the monthly opens, that's when it's really going to start to heat up. So that's going to be happening starting in February, the beta season. Y'all have any questions about that? Uh, not quite a question, <clears throat> just a comment. I'm really excited for a monthly tournament to affect world's qualifications. I think it'll be really fun to watch the, the points race. Yeah, I think that'll be really cool because we had it happened in like big chunks every two and a half months previously. And so it wasn't so much of a race. It was it was like, mm -hmm. oh, they did pretty good. Let's wait. Yeah. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Yeah. You know, like this will be a little more. Oh, sorry. A little more like up, up, up. And it'll be close. And I, I don't know. I think that'll be fun. So, yeah, uh, no promises now, but I'm excited about figuring out how we can potentially give out points for ladder, how we can potentially give out points to grassroots tournaments um, that way. Like, like Majin is saying, like, not only will there be the sort of oscillation of every month, there's going to be people going up and down, but there might be even other times where players can get points. Um, and one thing that I'm pretty, pretty confident that we will do is points will qualify for worlds um, on both a seasonal and yearly basis. So what I mean by that is at the end of each season, the, the season leader might qualify for Worlds. How long is the Exact season? numbers and everything. So how long is the season? It's 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 a spicy question. Um, a tournament season is going to be three months. That may or may not coincide with content releases. Uh, it doesn't mean, you know, that we won't have, like, balance patches and stuff like that. 
but we had to actually pick a, a, a length that works for tournaments. So the tournament season reward track, not the beta season. The beta season is going to be like a lot shorter and a bit more scrappy, but we're moving to a future where we're going to have hopefully three month tournaments. That's not set in stone yet, but that's my general idea of like basically a quarter is going to be a season. So you might see three seasons leading up to worlds uh, at the end of the year. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, that's that's fantastic, man. Monthly monthly tournaments, I can't imagine um, having having so much more stuff to do. Um, I can imagine. I'm oh, still. Oh, I'm, I'm so <laughs> stoked. Um, so yeah. So when you're saying uh, qualify to go all the way back to, we're saying that the winner of this seasonals this month, those three players from one from each shard, they go directly into the world's finals. I.e., they are like in yeah. the money. Um, in the money, so, so we haven't really gotten as far as to design worlds itself, but what we do know about it is it's going to be a bit different than last year. Um, I think we're going to have a more kind of exclusive pool of players. Like, I don't think we're going to do, um, I don't think we are going to do, sorry, I don't want to, I don't want to necessarily commit to this since it might, it might change. Um, I think that how the way the regional qualifiers works, I guess, is going to potentially change. Um, in a way where we essentially might have a, you know, we want kind of a bigger world. That way we can explore more sort of like cross region competition. Um, and that's something that I'm, and when I say bigger, I mean the final will be bigger. Like it won't necessarily, it won't, it'll probably be larger than 16 players. Um, but yeah, in terms of the world final happening this next year in the money, I, we haven't really distributed down like how far we're going to go down. Um, but I imagine that everybody that qualifies for the world final will will get cash. I mean, I'm going to be building the system, so <laughs> yeah. Um, so okay, so it will it, it will be no, cash, but it won't necessarily be. There's sorry. no qualifier. Is what I'm saying. It's like you're just you're in worlds though. If you win the seasonals, you are just in worlds, whatever that looks like at right. the end. There's not like a like currently where you qualify for the qualifier and then try to make it into the top. Right. Season. Yeah, which is great because I, I, I didn't love that system. Got to say. I, I did like that it was very, like, um, it, w it was really good for inclusion. Like, it, it had a lot of different ways to get in. Like, you could spike a tournament, you could do well over the year, you could do you could do ranked ladder. Um, but to your point, like, yeah, I think the I think the sort of qualifying for a qualifier feels pretty bad. It, it almost can potentially undermine how, like, how prestigious it feels to, like, win a tournament, which is why for the World Ender, and note that World Ender is kind of, one of the last seasonals, the way that we used to have them. Um, so we wanted to make sure to avoid like what I'd call like a lame duck tournament where it doesn't matter for anything. Yeah. That's why we're going to have that direct world final qualification, which, yeah. So I guess to answer your question, yes, it basically means you're going to be in the money uh, in worlds. Yeah. Um, like you say, I loved, I loved the different qualification paths. I thought you guys nailed that. That was great. The qualifying for a qualifier was rough you know when you yeah when you go all no year <laughs> and you 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 know grind really hard and then you get there and it's kind of just all up to that one double inch tournament tournament hoping that you kind of like you know run good and it works out for you uh was definitely a bit of a feel it felt like you didn't get to compete in worlds it didn't feel it, it didn't it feel like worlds yeah there was no coverage of it still. and stuff yeah. um mm -hmm. but so yeah glad to hear that's changing as well um so okay another question that i had was uh you know, like you mentioned, you've uh, been on the design team, so you've designed a lot of our favorite champions. Uh, you've done balance patches. Mm -hmm. Is are you full time now on um, you know working as the competitive lead? Is there are there more people working with you? Can you speak to that at all? Yeah, I, I can speak to that. So we actually uh, right now I'm. It's it's weird to say I'm not working full time on it since I'm essentially the lead. Like any any design decisions I'm responsible for. Um, but I would say I'm working about 50% on cards, 50% on tournaments. Um, but it also depends week to week. Like for instance, a lot of this is actually, I've been working on the systems design, which means like, okay, how many points do you get for, for each win? How long are the tournaments? When, when do they happen? What are the formats, uh, implementing schedules and working with engineers to actually implement this kind of thing over time. So it's sort of like a, you a lot of a lot of work up front to design the system and then working you mentioned like oh who's on the team um so yeah we actually have a team uh, uh i can't you know of we've got a few engineers as well as producers 
and QA, uh, in addition to design, that's just myself. And essentially, we're working together to ship the whole feature because it's going to be a it's essentially going to be a new feature in the game is there's going to be a tournament reward track as well as gauntlets that happen every day. Um, so yeah, we've got a team working on it. Essentially, you know, uh, it, it's weird to say we're not full time because basically we all, we have many hats on lore, right? Um, but I think that right now as, as the lead, like where I'm, I'm especially taking time to make sure that the systems are in check, um, get that set up. The big thing though, is like getting players feedback because I think, we can sit here and talk about systems all we want. We can implement whatever we want, but ultimately there's going to be a lot more work when players start getting the system and we figure out how do we improve it? You know, what goes into different releases. And that's something one that we're asking for feedback. And two, we're also just asking for patience, like, because we are transitioning into a beta season and then we're going to be transitioning into the more full release later this year. And, and part of that is just knowing that, you know, behind the scenes, it takes a lot to get all this into the game. So definitely shout out to the tournaments team. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where I'm at and where the tournament team is at. Big ebb and flow, design a bunch of stuff, <laughs> you know, work with, work with engineering to sort of figuring out how to, how to get it into the game, uh, get the assets we need from art even with some of the new uh, spicy rewards that we have. And then hopefully when we give it to players, a million things might may or may not blow up Hope, hopefully it's weird it's like hopefully they don't but i'm also almost expecting some stuff too and then we'll go back in and keep iterating is kind of the process that we're gonna be doing yeah i love that you guys are doing this uh beta season because um something i always think about when we talk about systems is gamers gonna game and you never know what the system's gonna look like until you actually give it to a bunch of gamers and like i've you know we've seen other systems like in other games or or anything where you could get like a weird edge and people are just doing like absurd things trying to like maximize their their win percentage or um you know finding like loopholes or or things and you know systems start to break or you find that like oh things are not quite weighted the way that you want them to be or whatever um so yeah i think it's yeah it's great you know that you guys are doing this beta and that you're getting feedback from the um from the community um and then yeah then on a technical standpoint I, i was really interested in um you know how much of this was kind of new and how much of it was kind of like grabbing other pieces of like whatever gauntlet or something else or what was seasonals and like reworking mm-hmm. them because that's another um failure point of course is like the technical aspect of it if everything will uh you know work correctly um is that was that an issue or has that come up where there was maybe things that you wanted to implement or do and they were like maybe just not technically feasible yeah, so I guess I'll talk about both. The first thing you talked about was tuning. So I'll talk about that and then the technical stuff. So tuning, tuning is really is really hard, right? It's like you can, I, as a card designer, I know this the most, right? You can, you can work all you want. You can, you can, you can grind it out and then you can still like release a fel- like release a Felios or whatever, you know, it just things Throw like that, that ha- happen, you know, like, and, and t- to that extent, I would, I would actually call out specifically like um, the old system, uh, I think we had the invite split so that like 66% came of tournaments, but 33% came from ranked ladder. Um, but because of like the ladder tie break, actually ladder ended up almost mattering like equal, if not m- maybe about equal. Cause you still had to do well in tournaments. Um, I used but, to say that if you had the ladder tiebreakers, it was a cheat. Yeah. Right. Like, and that's, that's something, how powerful it felt. And that's something that we actually like learned was that we still want the ability to sort of have ranked matter, right? We still want to make sure that players have that motivation to get that high rank. Um, so that's something, you know, sorry to take your question another way, but basically like it's going to, and there's going to be some, I'm not going to say there's going to be a loophole in the system. That doesn't sound right, but there might be something that isn't exactly the way that we intend. And we will come back in and, 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 you know, make adjustments. Um, in terms of the technical stuff, I don't want to get too deep into it, but it definitely is a, a pretty big cost to to make tournaments, right? We have myself, we have uh, multiple engineers, we have producers who plan all the work, right? Um, trying to get what we can into the game for players. And oftentimes there's a trade-off, right? Where it's like, hey, and this happens with like live balance patches and this happens with pretty much anything that you see in the game, like Path of Champions or like new board scans is like, if somebody is working on something, like they're not working on something else, which is kind of this like invisible cost. Like even like if I if I work on this, then I don't get to make champions, right? Which, you know, that 
That's, that's the thing that happens. And the same thing goes for any kind of work that we do. So there's always going to be a cost for tournaments. I would say, Jason, is that we are, we are committed to lore PVP, like in terms of resourcing it so that we have these new tournament systems. That said, we're still going to say, well, you know, and this happens all the time. Like, and this is just, this is just insight into the kind of the game industry is like, as a designer, you know, I'm like, okay, here's the system we want. And then we talk to producers and then we talk to QA and then we talk to engineering. And then it's like, okay, this is what we're getting. And that's why we have like beta season, right? Like all that stuff under there is like, okay, this is, if play, if player, you know, players might give us feedback, we might do different stuff. Hey, we really want this this premium feature or this other thing that got cut, let's get it in for the next release. And that's something that at Riot, we're always interested in doing is like kind of reiterating on the system. And one thing that you can expect in terms of this PVP support is I feel like in the past uh, for, I don't know if y'all probably felt this a little bit is where we had seasonals and worlds. And it was kind of like on like a yearly cycle. It's like, Oh, here's what we're doing this year. Okay. End of year. Here's what we're doing this year. And you know, I don't want to overpromise anything here, but we will be updating daily rumbles and monthly Runeterra opens and, and like throughout the year this year. So essentially the idea is it being more of an active service for us to get it right. Um, you know, obviously I'm still working on cards and there's there's going to be certain times when we might not have an update every patch, but there will be sort of a more active active look into how to make tournaments successful and also sustainable because ultimately like Jason, sorry, this is maybe this is like way too like game Debbie, but one of the things that we're trying to do with tournaments just to be forward with y'all is to make them more sustainable, both so that they can kind of like automatically run both for players. So that that's a bit easier. And for us, because right now, like a seasonal tournament, like, you know, we need, we need engineers on call. We need myself as a referee in case any weird thing happens which is kind of why it's exciting for us to move away from that Swiss system and have more of an automated queue. I think it both helps players and us. And then we can still have premier tournaments like Worlds and stuff like that, where we have that sort of intense Swiss competition. Um, I guess Worlds is, last year wasn't Swiss, but, you know, I guess it was between the groups. Um, but, yeah, sorry, that, that was a whole lot. But that's basically my thinking on the, like, how we're resourcing it. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, okay, I have a few more like more specific kind of questions, um, or at least just thoughts, maybe even. Uh, so the points, the points race that we're talking about, is there? Will that be displayed anywhere? Will it be in real time? Like, um, will it be on the website? How will it show up in your uh, profile somewhere? How's that going to work? Yeah, so I, I don't think that the the leaderboard points, similar to like in previous years with seasonal points and rank points, that will be something that we will be publishing on our website. Um, I I would love for that to eventually be in client and for there to be leaderboards in clients, um, but I don't think for like the beta season and you know big emphasis on the like the big transition here is I don't think that will be in clients. Uh, hopefully, we can use our website to publish that. Um, it's actually funny that you mentioned this because I was just talking to uh julian about this the other day who who is one of our community leads around like what we can do here and i know uh in the past it was always in, in, in other games like when i played magic they they you know there were always like third parties that did this kind of thing and it always kind of felt a little bad it's like well why, why don't y'all just do this right and 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 maybe i'm ca catching my tongue in my mouth here because we probably want to eventually have some sort of system uh, that will display these because ultimately a lot of it is about player celebration about like, Oh, here's like the leaderboard points. You can like see it like just how they can go on the rank ladder and see who is doing well. I think eventually we do want to see if we can get that uh, in game or publish in a way that is more um, what's, what's the word like for, <laughs> for like not iterating, but like instead of updating it at the end of each season, having more of a like, more dynamic, more real time kind of thing. Right. I, I don't know if that's like a this year thing. I, I can see if we can talk about that, but uh, current plans are to just publish it on our website, similar to what we did last year. Gotcha. Um, yeah, and the other sort of uh, thinking that I had around that was, um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but there was never really, like we've had these monthly updates where they, you know, we get some information mm -hmm. about worlds and then a little bit more information. Um, mm -hmm. But as a new player, when we're trying to bring new players into the game, I think it would be really nice to have like some sort of infographic or a page that kind of just breaks down 
how everything works and how mm-hmm. everything ties together. I feel like that was one thing that we were missing. Like to this day, I'm not exactly sure how Gauntlet works. I don't really know. I like right. have a general idea <laughs> and I play the game more yeah. than like, you know, 99.99% of the people on the planet. Um, so yeah, is there, have you guys thought about that at all about um, how you're going to like uh, display this information or share it? Um, Cause I feel like definitely we want to live somewhere where it can be referenced constantly and not just be like in a post that maybe yeah. gets buried over time. Yeah. So, so our initial plan is to one, like partner with community like y'all to make sure that you can help spread the word as well as do a post. I think long-term uh, it would be great if we had sort of like uh we were able to update it whenever we have a new season. Like we have, Oh, this is the, this is the state of state of lore competitive. Like, Here's what's happening this season. Here's the schedule. Um, it, we will have ways in client. Like we will have ways to get to the article from in clients. And we will also have a, a home screen button that will allow players to go into Gauntlet's directly from the home screen. Like you see the uh, Path of Champions button. Um, and that will also have a link to the schedule. So players will be able to uh, get to it. To your point though, like that's having to go to a third party or not a third party because it's us, but having to go to our website, uh, even like for, especially for like players on mobile is not always the greatest experience. Um, so there will be some information in the client, like about gauntlets that'll, that'll help players hopefully understand. But part, part of this is this, uh, what, what you said, like you've played gauntlet or you, you you've played with Runeterra for a long time, but don't really understand gauntlets is part of it is sort of getting players into the daily habit of you know checking out what's going on and seeing if they want to compete um so i don't have a great answer other than we we will have a lot we will have posts and we will we we'll partner with community um in terms of always having the exact perfect information definitely keep up to date on our website that's probably the best thing you can do okay great yeah um another question i had i don't know if you're able to answer this one or not is what are the prizes uh like for the the daily rumbles uh, good question. So daily rumbles will give prizes. Essentially, the only they will give not not the only, but they will give prizes. They'll give you points on the reward track. Um, and one of the things that we're trying to do next year is act. Or sorry, next year, twenty twenty three. This year uh, is I'm so used to saying that is um, doing more prestigious rewards. So like being being a collector and being able to get things that you're like, oh, I did really well in tournaments, so I, I get like season badges. So one thing we're introducing that's new is like player titles. So for instance, playing in the Daily Rumble will give you points on the reward track, and that'll give you pl- uh, player titles. It'll give you what we're calling season badges, which is uh, which is sort of a, a badge that levels up. The, the World Ender ones are themed off KO, and they look really, they re- look really cool. Uh, and the other thing is Prime Glory. So... There will be always that incentive to play in them so that you can maybe get your prime glories. But generally speaking, it's just going to be uh, your bonus XP that currently you get for playing in gauntlets, as well as the sort of points on the reward track, which tentatively we're calling trophies. I don't know if that'll be exactly what they're called when it's released, but uh, that that's what you get in the dailies. Okay, and will all of that be available like at the beta? Um... Yep. So... There will be dailies available in the beta, monthly. Um, there'll be. A, I don't want to commit to how long it'll be, but there will be monthlies uh, during the. Uh, sorry, there will be month Runeterra opens. I keep calling the month. It's essentially the same thing. Uh, there will be Runeterra opens during the beta, where you can also get a lot of points if you want to try that out. So I definitely recommend checking that out. And sorry, I forgot the name already, but what were the two things that you mentioned at the beginning there with the rewards? They're like player titles and something else? Yeah, so player titles. So there'll be things that you will be able to equip uh, to your account uh, that will like signify that you've you've accomplished something. They're going to be pretty specific to tournament stuff. Uh, we're all, I'm also excited to like retroactively, well, one, uh, introduce new things like titles for getting top eight or top 100 on the ladder, uh, titles for being world finalists, things like that. Because I think we really want to move to like trying to celebrate players more. And those player titles will be displayed on the loading screen. Um, so your opponent will be able to see them. In the future, we're going to want more ways to sort of flex that stuff in game. But I really like the idea of anything prestigious where it's like, hey, like, uh, I, 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 I lo- uh, what, one, one of the things that I'm excited about about title design is this, this thing that I'm calling... Um, 
<laughs> these are really bad names, but super titles and meta titles. So like a super title is a title that you get for getting a, one title like several times. So they kind of like upgrade. So maybe, you know, you get mo- three top eights in different Runeterra opens or, or, or what have you. And then you get like the super uh, prestigious title that, that like nobody else has. So I'm pretty excited about that kind of thing. And then meta titles, which are like essentially get a bunch of different titles to get something. Um, so I'm excited about exploring like oh i did well in a bunch of different seasons so i get a title um so yeah that's just something easy we can do to celebrate players uh will this is important with anything uh that you can brag about in my opinion (laughs) can i show it off to other people like when i match against someone will it show up it will show up uh on when you match with them uh we're currently working on hopefully in the future it'll be in game but it will be on the the loading screen as well as your season badges. I don't want to get too deep into those since I think that'll be exciting when we release that at a later date. Um, but there will be essentially a tournament specific cosmetics that'll let you show off how good you are essentially, or how well you did in a certain season. Um, and that'll be pretty exciting to get players. Since I think that one of the things that Terra really lacks is that idea of like collecting because it's just so free to play friendly that like you essentially, most competitive players I'm guessing just have everything oh, yeah by the nature of like practicing for seasonals and, and, and what I probably have everything for five Easy. sets. So yeah, the idea <laughs> is we're going to give things to players just to allow you to flex on them a little bit. I think that everybody wants a little bit of that, especially tournament players. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's like the main thing. All I want to do is rub Majin's face and stuff and be like, I love you, but look how much better I am than you. That's what I want. Um, yes. Obviously we're just starting the system. Uh, so definitely don't miss out on getting the beta season badge, because if you miss out on that, then you're going to be sad forever. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, uh, hopefully we work up to the idea of you really know, you know, players can really show their personality and their accolades through some of the work rewards they get for tournaments. And that's something that will really work. I mean, I've said it like a few times, but that's to sort of explain the idea of just having more prestigious rewards in the game, especially because from our end, you know, things that level up, are, are a lot easier for us to just provide for players, like things like player titles. You know, I, I, I'm designing a lot of player titles, so I'm excited to see what people think about them. Nice. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing those. Um, I mean, stuff like that that's unique, uh, that lets you flex on people. Like, those those, those things are great. Um, also, just, like, things that affect stuff in-game, I think, are really cool. Like, if you ever were able to get, like, a player title or or what have you, and it was able to, like, affect mm-hmm. your... Is it Avatar? Are they called Avatar? Guardian? Guardian. Guardian. Yeah, I was yeah. able to like affect your guardian, like maybe it made it gold or something, or to put a little hat on it, or like stuff mm-hmm. like that, or it affected boards somehow. Anything that like ties stuff together is like, the novelty of it. I love everything like that. I know obviously from a um you know engineering making stuff like that happen sort of standpoint, that's a lot uh, to ask whoever, but stuff like that is just fantastic. Um, but that brings me to another question though. Um, now that seasonals are going from two or three months down to you know, we have a monthly tournament. Um, are there going to be any cash prizes for any of these monthly tournaments? Or is it just um, cosmetics and points for future tournaments and for Worlds? Good question. So the Runeterra Opens will have cash prizes, um, but they won't be to the extent that you see seasonals now. But what we're doing and what we're trying to do is, like I mentioned at the at the top of the broadcast, is we will be doing select Runeterra Opens will be world qualifiers. So like the World Ender Seasonal, they will have direct invites. I like it. I hope we we see some some more like silver players with crazy lineups when it's spiking stuff. Like that's (laughs) exciting. Yeah, the other thing is I'm I'm hoping, and this is part of the design of the system, is I'm hoping that we eventually see like specialists in Runeterra. And what I mean by that is like, hey, maybe one month it's eternal season, right? And we have daily gauntlets that are eternal. And then we have like the monthlies eternal. And maybe maybe you're a player that's not really that excited about standard, right? And you don't play on the ranked land or standard, but like eternal is your format. So like that's your month to go and try to like get a bunch of points and qualify. Um, so yeah, definitely excited for that. Leave your, if y'all have ideas for formats, definitely let us know because each one costs us a bit to try to develop. Um, so let us know what you think there. Um I think standard and internal are great places to start, obviously. Right. And then... So, yeah, that's kind of a confirmation. I think I've seen a lot of people talk about, oh, is, like, Eternal going to be supported? There there will be Runeterra Opens for Eternal, so definitely don't write it off before it, before it's out. 
Um, yeah, it's funny uh, the discourse I find on rotation because we all come from a magic background, and to me, it's just natural and normal, and kind of what you have to do to keep the sort of prune the format and uh, keep it healthy. Uh, and I'm looking forward to also being able to switch between formats, you know, where you go to like a standard with a smaller card pool and things are a little bit weaker um, and games are a little bit longer generally. And then you go to like Eternal where things are a little bit more busted and um, it's a nice, a nice uh, juxtaposition going back and forth. Um, what about, um, I don't really care about this one so much, but Majin really wants to know when the limited format might be coming around. <clears throat> is that is that still in the works? Um, what, what are you able to, if anything, able to talk about? I, I can't talk much about it. Um, it it's it's n not necessarily something that I'm super comfortable talking about. I think strategically, I think we need a PvP mode that ser eventually we need a PvP mode that serves players that like limited players that kind of don't necessarily want to don't necessarily want to get uh, have have rank decks and sort of like be scrappy and, and get cards as they go and have those like motives of playing like low powered modes. I guess the answer is like, uh, I don't really have any information on it other than as a designer, I see a need for players to have a PVP limited mode. Um, exactly how and when that's gonna be implemented, uh, you know, is still definitely up in the air. Gotcha, okay. Well, as someone who never plays Path and desperately wants a limited mode, I'll tell mm. you, it's not checking my box. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you yeah. know, I'm I'm, a, I'm the classic Magic player. I want to be able to booster draft. I want to be able to cube. Um, those are the kinds. Of, I love I love formats where you get to, you know, jam card. This is why I've liked uh, the Seraphine Bar decks so much. It's because you get to just jam weird cards together into strange concoctions mm -hmm. that you would never normally see, which is something you get from Limited. Um, so, you know, for yourself and anyone else at Riot that's, that's listening, desperately. <laughs> desperately want a limited format um what you know whatever you guys have time um and then yeah what shoot there's another question i had i can't remember now off the top of my head though maji you got some questions i feel like i've been talking for a while uh i so we 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 talked previously to kind of set this up um and all this is really really exciting this is like basically what i would set up if you said majin what would you set up if you had the ability to like if you could pick a perfect system what would it look like it would be very 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 similar to this except one thing that i really wanted is not there and i don't know if i'm allowed to ask you i mean you can just say no just ask you can ask yeah i mean I, okay I'm, I'm not afraid um yeah so is there any kind of um we, we we have all these like open tournaments um where everyone can enter except specifically worlds uh do you expect there to be any kind of tournament more similar to a pro tour or any kind of uh premium version of a you tournament like an in-person like event or i pro mean tour? well let's talk about that I, don't know. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> I mean i guess i guess in terms of an in-person event I, I i think that and i've talked to uh dave tron dave guskin uh the game director about this is i think we're pretty far away from having an in-person like pro tour that's really just about competitive um we are excited about things that are more in the in-person space that are more like celebratory like more just like content summit creators kind of thing or like more of like a summit or something i don't want to promise something like that but i think to just if you do see something like that it probably won't be super geared to competitive and it might be more of a um more of a celebration talk to devs i know we've been really excited about ideas to just like activate the community and get them more involved um, so yeah, we, we've spoken about it and I think I've, I've, you know, why can't I share that we've spoken about it? Cause we have, but that's all just talk, right? I don't, I don't think that we will see anything in the near future where we're seeing like an in-person competition in terms of premium. Um, I, I would love to talk about what that looks like, but I think that that's something that's like coming out. We're working on things that satisfy that need, uh, after the beta season. Like personally, I'm really excited about, um potentially having like premium weekends which is almost like a a rune terra open light where hey you know this weekend or on a certain weekend it's like double trophies right with like a coin buy-in or something that way you can really play for some from stakes that doesn't doesn't give you directly world points since i think that there's definitely some competitive integrity issues with the like sort of just like oh you you can buy you can pay more money to get yeah. more points um but i think that there's 
things that are adjacent in that space. So to answer the question about like premium, we're definitely looking at it. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, and I can't share that with you now. Um, but I am excited about raising the stakes a bit. Uh, so yeah, we'll see what we can do. Awesome. Because if there's anything I like, it's just higher stakes. <laughs> just always. <laughs> yeah, More well, stakes. That, I just think it's fun. That's something that hopefully like daily rumbles do. Because I think it's I think it's going to put at least a little bit of stakes on your everyday play if you want it. I think there will be some more for fun formats. Like one of the formats that we're kicking off with is uh, uh, is unlimited champions. So it's just you can just play as up to 40 champions in your deck oh uh, with standard rules. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then you're also going to see more like standard best of three, you know, your more typical kind of tournaments. Um, so I'm just excited to see what players brew up with that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, it's my bets on uh, elusives storming the ladder. We're gonna, yeah. It's going to be like a Teemo, Fizz, yeah. <laughs> Zoe deck is going to like run day one or something. Yeah, but the idea is there's at least for some of these for fun formats, it's both you know, scratching that like, oh, players want variety, but also there will be a bit more of a competitive feel than just to jump on the ladder and do that kind of thing. So that's really exciting. Yeah. I I'm excited to see that kind of stuff, especially for those more interesting formats. I like, I'm just imagining in my head, like here, the formats coming up and everyone's trying to make decks and maybe someone did yeah. really well on day one. And we're just going to see a bunch of like, you know, Twitter discourse and like people on Reddit just talking about like, oh, but this is doing really good. Like, oh no, no, the you, the optimal amount of champions is twenty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and just to be clear, champions. I think Runeterra opens are going to stick to the more bread and butter, like serious competitive tournament formats, mm -hmm. um, where they're going to be. I think you know they'll be standard best of three, but we will experiment with some other stuff. But standard best of three and then eternal best of three are probably going to be the main things. Uh, with the daily rumbles that are beforehand, which is this feedback that y'all actually gave me, is like probably you have like a at least some amount of time to prepare in the daily rumble for the monthlies beforehand. So don't want to scare anybody with with the talk of crazy formats when we're also talking about competitive, and, and that's really our challenge, right? Is both getting the upper echelon and those like new players both excited at the same time. Yeah, I would definitely say I think as much as possible you want to keep the the dailies the same format as the monthly tournament. And then I think you experiment mm. with the, the two weeks uh, on the other end of the monthly tournament of just like having fun and making it other stuff. Because um, I know <clears throat> there's been times when, um, you know, there's a qualifier uh, for a tournament um but there's tournaments that are one format and then the actual tournament is a different format and you're like i don't even want to play this like i'm just here because i kind of have to or whatever and it feels like a bit of a waste of time there's mm -hmm. a bit of a disconnect um so avoiding that would be great um yeah i remember my question now it was so you talked about how in previous years um you guys would sort of bookend things into a calendar year is that still the thinking for instance like is world still going to be at the end of 2023 or is it possible now that, you know, maybe it happens at the beginning of 2024? Good question. So in terms of the, in terms of what I said before it is more about like, you know, the work that goes in before to create the system. And then that's the system for the whole year. It'll kind of continue to be that once we, once we commit and we'll, we'll be very clear with our language when, when we post it, um, that will be the system for the year. And yeah, we, I, I, in terms of like when Worlds or whatever our end of year tournament is this year, like it's going to be a Worlds like tournament for sure. Um, whether that's in November or December, I'm not sure. I'm, I, I can't really commit. It, I don't think it'll be next year though, because I think that this, at least for the system for now, we're going to set it up for the year. And that's why we're kind of talking a bit early instead of, you know, it's already January. Um, and we want to make sure that players are a bit informed of like, hey, there's a new system coming. Um, but yeah, it'll pretty much be a, a calendar year type thing. Um, but we are planning right now on having um, 11 Runeterra opens. So like that's the bigger tournaments are already kind of scheduled because then we're going to have one in February, you know, for the rest of the year, essentially. Uh, so definitely we have some commitments that that players can know, okay, this is what the system is going to be like. But you know, exactly what that looks like is going to be coming out in the future. Yeah, great. Um, and on that topic, you know, like Majin had discussed, I mean, we've discussed also having dead time is uh, is rough. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like you said, there's going to be 11 tournaments, which you know basically means one every month for the rest of the year. Um, I think definitely trying to figure out how those tournaments around Worlds end up being scheduled, definitely important 
Uh, Majin, you think you, I, we talked about this a bit. I, we talked back and forth. We thought the, the monthly tournament should come before or after Worlds. Um, I think after, right? Was that, was that what your thinking was? Or no, you wanted before, I wanted after. I wanted before. I wanted to build up to the big yeah, one. Yeah, you want to build yeah. up to the big one. I wanted people to have a reason to look at Worlds and be like, I want to know what the best players are playing so that next weekend mm -hmm. I can like go and play their decks. Either way, though, I think both of those make for a fantastic way to keep people that are not qualified for Worlds into the uh, into the fold yeah. and whatnot. We're, we're brainstorming ways of making that I think that this year, like, Worlds is pretty exciting, but, you know, there not being a seasonal until January is definitely, that definitely feels a bit long to me. Um, so just just on intuition, like, you're excited to play the format, and then, like, oh, well, by the time you play it, there's, like, a hot fix or a patch, and it's different. Um, I think that we'll be looking at ways to improve that this year. Another thing um, that, I'll, that I'll leave us on, I don't want to get too deep into the details here, but we're excited about potentially having, like, just because the Runeterra opens are scheduled for monthly, um, we're potentially toying with the idea of having some sort of celebrational or additional qualifier tournaments towards the end of the year. That way, if you kind of missed out, you can still get in and get on that really like qualifier. Okay, I just got to win this and get in feel. Uh, so I'm excited about seeing if we can seed in any extra Runeterra opens at the end of the year. Like so that way, instead of it's like, oh, the, this, this happens in pretty much every competitive system I've seen for, you know, it happens in the LCS at the end of the, at the end of the split. It happens in Magic when I used to play where it's like, oh, it's the end of the season. My pro points don't matter because, you know, like it's for this season, not next season. I'm super excited to see if we can have some sort of last chance qualifier uh, type thing, which is, I think, pretty common in other CCGs, but we haven't really seen it outside of the last seasonal. Um, so tying that together will be something that I'm pretty interested in pursuing this year. Love those. Last chance qualifiers, PTQs, all those kind of things. I think those are so fun. Yeah, it's great. For anyone getting into the game, you know, that joins or gets back into the game, uh, not to be in the season to, you know, not feel like they're handicapped because they didn't get, you know, points from all the way from the beginning um, or anyone that just didn't get enough points for any reason. Having that, like, uh, last second chance is great. I've always loved that. Um, okay, so I know we're running up against time here. Um, you know, if anyone has any, uh, comments or, uh, thoughts on what we discussed or questions, you can definitely leave them, um, down in, um, the, uh, the messages of this YouTube video. Um, and also Ruben, do you want to tell people maybe the best ways, um, that they can sort of start giving, uh, feedback to the team? Yeah, it's actually, it's actually a good question. I mean, I think we... <laughs> Not to sound creepy, but I feel like we're all we're always listening, you know, like like on socials, on Reddit, in our official Discord is, is another place. Um, we always have our eye out. Um, but yeah, I think if you want to if you want to reach out, hope, I don't know, maybe we can set something up where we get some more direct feedback, like we did at the end of last year. Um, but in terms of in terms of yet, I would just say try to jump into the beta season and and see what formats you like, what you don't like, how the progression feels, everything like that. How do the point systems feel? Um, that will all be really helpful for us when we eventually roll out the full system. If you have any original thoughts, like obviously people, I, I might not always respond, but you can hit me up on Twitter uh, at RubenZoo. Um, you know, more, more or less, it'll get seen. It might not always get responded to, but I'll definitely check that out. Okay, great. I, um, as a last kind of comment, uh, I myself being obviously a more competitively focused player, I think most of us are, most people listening are probably as well. Um, so we tend to focus on the bigger tournaments. I think the daily gauntlets, having more casual players, giving them a reason to log in and play every day and stuff like they, you know, to, to fill that rewards track, they, it's like, Oh, you know, it's this gauntlet today. Like I'm going to see what's up with that. I think, I think that's actually going to be a really big deal. I think that would be really good for, the player base that maybe they log in once a week, they try stuff. I think, I think it'll be a big incentivizer for a lot of people. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Um, sorry, I'm going to cut you off. You want to? No, I mean, I, I, I'm excited about it too. We, we did some experiments with the Xbox pass last year, like trying to do time winder gauntlets and stuff like that. Uh, just to see, um, I think that, you know, those were, kind of exciting because they were fresh but weren't necessarily all the way there because there was no system behind them outside of the current system of getting prime glories which 
you know, like I think we talked about before, I think that it's a really good system for, for the players that utilize it and play in the last chance gauntlet, but I feel like that's a small amount of players. So hopefully it, uh, with the new rewards and everything, it opens it up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Great. I'm sure, you know, everyone's gonna have a lot of questions about how this stuff uh, works. Um, and I don't know how much you're able to commit to, but are you able to give a timeline of when, you know, the announcement will come out and uh, more information will be available to players? Yeah. So our next patch is on February 1st. Um, and that will be a balance patch. So you'll see uh, changes that we're working on now. And with that, we will also probably have comms around the beta season of tournament seasons. It's a lot of seasons, but yeah. So uh, st- definitely sit tight. We'll have some more official comms around the end of, of January. Um, hopefully that's not too specific and I get yelled at. I think that that's probably what it's going to be because that's when the patch is coming down. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And um, Oh, you go. can I say yes. one more thing? So that will be just for the beta season in terms of like, qualifying for worlds and stuff like that there's almost two different things there's like the beta season and tournament season and then there's like you know like competitive organized play um exactly i've outlined kind of what the system looks like now but the x's and o's and the amounts probably won't be out until the end of the beta season or before like right before the end so players what once you need to know you'll know but for now we're just focusing on the kind of stepping stones going from current seasonals to the beta season and then to our first big release uh, later this year gotcha yeah that's great um even just knowing that you know all this stuff is being worked on and that it is coming and it will be rolled out i think goes a long way um i know sometimes with comms itself there's, there's a bit of a disconnect and you know players don't really understand what was going on or, or what was coming uh so i think um you know this is great we thank you so much for coming uh on the podcast and everyone else at riot that um you know is helping us sort of bridge that gap um and super excited honestly can't can't wait um (laughs) yeah wish you know wish it was the end of the month already because i want to see all the new stuff i want to hear about it i want to i want to start trying it out um yeah i want to go get player titles i want to see the player titles i want to see everything (laughs) yeah all of it um but i think that's all we got for you guys today uh thank you for everyone for listening thank you again ruben for being on the podcast hope to have you on again sometime soon and um yeah i think that's it big any last words okay we'll say goodbye